Be the Talk, episode 280, featuring Bobby Umar. Welcome to Be the Talk. We go behind the talk seven days a week for tips and techniques to help you change the world. I'm Nathan Eckel, and a talker myself, I'm interviewing others who change the world with their talk. You can too, even if you've never given a talk before. Let's get started with today's show. We are live with Bobby Umar. Bobby, are you ready to talk? Yeah, I'm ready to talk, ready to walk, ready to rock. Bobby Umar is a five-time TEDx speaker. He's an Inc. Magazine Top 100 leadership speaker, a social media influencer, and a coach. Bobby has spoken around the world on the power of connection as it relates to authentic networking, personal branding, and digital marketing and content. Bobby Umar, welcome to the talk. Thank you very much. Delighted to be here. So uh, Bobby's talk, he, uh, Bobby's talks, I could read them all out, but I think the one that I saw was the five C's of connection. Um, and then there, there are four more in addition to that. In the one that I saw, you talked about how connection really needs to have five different principles. Uh, it needs to be deep. It needs to be authentic. It needs to be genuine, meaningful, and finally, life-changing. So we can start right there. Please, Bobby, just take us a little bit behind the talk. Well, you know, when I first was asked, that was my first TEDx talk, and they said, you know, uh, you know, tell us, Bobby, what is your biggest idea of your life? And what are you all about? And so it, knowing my personal brand and what I was all about, you know, I, I had some ideas, but I had to kind of really figure it out what I want to talk about. But I realized that connection and the power of connection is something that I've been dealing with my whole life. And it really, it really came from the idea that my wife told me, which was, you know, Bobby, how is it when you meet someone and then within 20 minutes, they tell you their whole life story and they share the most intimate details of their life. And it's like, it's crazy to talk about their finances, their sex lives, their, their mental breakdowns. Like, well, how do you do that? And I was like, you know what? I don't know. Let me figure this out. And so then I started thinking about well, what is it do I actually do that does this? And then I was inspired by a talk that I'd seen by Brittany Brown mm -hmm. on the power of vulnerability. And I was like, well, you know what? She has research that suggests mm -hmm. the things that I'm doing is actually working. And so that's when I came to the idea, okay, you know what? Here's, here's what I do. It's really all about caring in a very genuine, authentic way. It's communicating in a very proactive and somewhat assertive way mm -hmm. to, you know, go to ask the really deep, dark questions. And then from that, create that powerful connection. And that's kind of how the whole talk came together. It was, uh, it was actually interesting because, you know, I didn't even know what TEDx was at the time. Um, and then I saw, wow, look at all these people that are doing this thing. I should totally do this. This is so cool. And I was actually nervous. And, you know, a funny story, um, I was backstage pacing back and forth because I was so nervous. And normally when I, because I've been a professional speaker now for over a decade and a half. Mm -hmm. And so I'm pretty, you know, confident. Yeah, you're you're pacing was, around nervous, even though you've been doing this for 15 yeah. years. <laughs> and, and, and I rehearsed this, and I normally don't rehearse my speeches, maybe once or twice it runs through my head. Mm -hmm. But I, I rehearsed this thing 30 times. And I was pacing back and forth. And then I saw this teddy bear. And I was like, well, that's, whose is that? And I said, can I grab it? And I grabbed it and I started hugging it back and forth because it was making me feel better. And then when they announced <laughs> my name, I took the teddy bear on stage. It wasn't planned. Everyone was like, is that planned? No, it wasn't planned. I took the teddy bear, teddy bear on stage, I hugged it, and I put it on the table, and then I began. And that was great. <laughs> All right. Now, th th there's so much there. I got to unpack it. So yeah. I, I think it really is about, you know, Bobby, you're, you're an unconscious competent in terms of connecting. And I know you are a master connector because you've been on that stage five times, and you don't get to be on the stage uh, very often or get on the stage at all unless you can connect in a major way. But this is powerful because you you just automatically connected. Your wife can't figure it out. Other people can't figure out how you connect. You didn't even know how you right. connected. And it took Big Ted's superstar, Brene Brown, talking about vulnerability, all the things that she talks about, and you, her work and her data – and you were able to have a framework based on some of her work to give language to what and, and become a conscious competent connector. Is that fair to say? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I think the best part was that her research validates what I had in my own mind mm. from a qualitative and anecdotal perspective. You know, I looked at all the connections I had my whole life, hundreds and hundreds of them, and what that was I actually doing. And yes, I was actually willing to share vulnerability. I was creating a space for vulnerable sharing back and forth. And those were among the deepest, most powerful connections of my life. And so that validation was fantastic. And I even leveraged that in my talk. Mm, man, that's powerful, powerful stuff. So, 
you know, so then there was the next talk and then there was the next talk. And, and so how 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 long ago was that first talk uh, relative to the present day? Yeah, so the first talk was, I don't even know the date, March 5th, 2011. And I know that because the day I knew I was going to do a TED Talk was the day I actually launched my social media strategy, which is essentially I started a newsletter, I started a Facebook page, I started a Twitter strategy, and everything kind of started from there uh, because I knew that it would be a really good launching platform for my speaking business. Uh, you know, and t- TEDx by, by its very nature is a fantastic branding tool as well yeah. to be associated with that brand, as well as to have the professional video that they created. So that's kind of, that's when it started. And then actually the first, the first four of my TEDx talks all happened within probably about within a two year span. And then, uh, and then I took a long, a long break. And then the last one happened actually just in March of this year. Ah, Wow. Yeah. Well, that's an interesting, uh, <laughs> that's an interesting timeline. Um, you know, I, I don't know, Talk Universe, if you caught this, but uh, Bobby just launched his social media branding strategy right when he got accepted for his first talk. Did I hear that right, Bobby? That's right. That's right. So can you, what could you say? Because I, you know, I noticed this with so many people. I talk about it in the Get Accepted course. I know so many of us are, do speaker coaching and, and, and whatnot. Uh, I'm more focused on helping people get accepted. And there's a real, I, I think for so many of us, myself included, um, you know, when, when we get accepted, the state of our brand is not necessarily stage ready. And when you got accepted that first time, you realized you needed to start a social plan, a content marketing plan, so that when you got on the stage for the first time, you would have a stage ready brand. Uh, and I, I'd love to hear, you know, how that that strategy paid off for you because it's the number one oversight that I hear with people. We think that those letters on the stage is going to, you know, magically be a magic wand. It's it's a great thing especially if we're ready for it, but it's not a magic wand. What are your thoughts on all that? Yeah, so the first thing I can tell you is that I specifically related the TED Talk to the brand that I was coming up with, which was the Power of Connection. I still use that today. Um, about a few months earlier, I had started tweeting a little bit. So I just joined Twitter like probably several months before, and I had started tweeting, and I'd say Power of Connection, rule number one, and I started sharing a rule of, of connection. And eventually, that was, I was planning to make that to be my book, too, The Power of Connection. Mm-hmm. So I, I made sure that the, the first talk aligned with what my brand was going to be moving forward. I had to pick something that was definitely going to be part of me my whole life. It wasn't going to change. It was not, not going to really alter. And now what I've seen is Power of Connection has been this way pretty much my whole life. I've run events called Power of Connection. I have a Facebook page called Power of Connection group. Like I have leveraged Power of Connection for almost everything that I do. And so that was a very, very important piece. Mm-hmm. And that also continued on when it came to my newsletter, which was called The Power of Connection, when it came to my Twitter strategy and my content all, all aligned around Power of Connection. And so doing that, I think, was very strategic. And I knew that at the same time, I was trying to, at this, at this, at this point, kind of, I would say struggling with my business. Uh, I was trying to really take it off to a higher level. And I knew that the, the TEDx talk would be a huge way to build build upon as a platform because then it became one time TEDx speaker, two time TEDx speaker, pretty soon four time TEDx speaker, uh, and then uh, then I just kind of rode that one for a while uh, to to grow my brand and my mm-hmm. business. Well, Talk Universe, I hope you were listening up. And if you weren't, you want to hit the re- rewind button on your cassette player, your 8-track, or your you know record player, whatever, whatever you're using right now. <laughs> you want to you listen to that again, because that is, val- I mean, if, if you, as you are getting accepted, if you can align your brand with who you really are and streamline it out like Bobby started doing, even if you don't really have that much of a personal brand, man, how powerful that will be for you. So uh, my, my question for Bobby, I mean, again, five time uh, TEDx speaker, you, you really, I mean, the, the, the foresight that you had to do that, not on talk number four or number three, but talk number one, and make it so much about who you are as a connector. Um, how did you layer the second talk, the third talk? How how did you go from there? Because it seems like you aligned it very, very well right right from the outset. So what was your continuing strategy? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, and funny enough, I don't talk very much about the second and third TEDx talks, mostly because there's no video. 
And one of the things I learned oh. that, you know, the, the right TEDx event, and they don't do a good oh. job, you can't get access to a video. So oh. the video quality was poor. Um, but I did align so it with can the we, can we hit? Can we pause on that? Um, was it a tech issue? Did they not follow the standards? Were they first year, first time events and didn't know what they were doing? Yeah, exactly, did- exactly. So one of the things to keep in mind okay. when you do TEDx talk, what you because I've also been asked to do other TEDx talks, which I've rejected for various reasons. Mm-hmm. If they don't have a strong social media presence or they are mm-hmm. new starting out, if they don't have the right video equipment set up, you need to be really hesitant about whether you want to accept that TEDx talk or not. Yeah. So. Uh, the second one, I remember, I, I it, it came two months before, and I, I accepted right away. I thought, hey, wow, two TEDx talks, that's great. But basically, the issue was the lighting was poor quality on the stage, and mm-hmm. therefore, Ted said, you cannot ha- have these videos. And on top of that, I wasn't even allowed to get access to the video. I was like, wow, I had no idea that they were so strict on that. And so, oh, you I didn't even like, have no. you didn't even get access to the to the footage. Wow. No, no, and I didn't bring a. I, I didn't bring my own camera, and I thought, oh shoot, this sucks. Like I was really disappointed. About that, that really sucks because the average uh, prep I've heard, I, and I don't know if this is absolutely true, but I, I think it is. I mean, the average person puts about fifty hours of effort into a well a well done talk. I mean, not everybody does. Not not all of them are well done. But I mean, what I, this is this is so important talk universe for you to hear. And and this is the first time that I actually got into it with a a guest who actually went through it. I'm I'm really happy this wasn't your first experience. This was your what second, third and fourth second, or yeah, the second one was second the, and the third. Big one where it was really bad. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, and, and, you know, and, and I can tell you that too, like, you know, people don't think about those things when they're trying to accept the tech because they want the first one. Now, if it's your first text talk, totally fine. But, you know, you want to get the video. That, that's a huge one. Even yeah. if they're poorly organized, as long as they have the video stuff in, in play, that's great. Because then you have a video saying, hey, here's my first TEDx talk. <laughs> Not having that was like a big pain. It's like, what, Bob is, they're like, Bobby, where's your talk? I can't share with you. Oh, my God. Oh, and, like, <laughs> oh, and I mean, that's a real, that's kind of a brand risk. I mean, we've got a number of branding e- experts on the broadcast uh, today. That's a risk to your brand because it wasn't your fault. I mean, if that had been your first talk, Oh my gosh! It's like, oh, Bobby, are you sure you 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 know <laughs> you gave a good talk? Are you sure you're sure, ready? I, it almost makes sure, you look bad. Yeah, but I would oh. just again as a brand expert, I would spin around into a story of vulnerability with the story of what's the story. What's lesson? No, that, that's what you would do. Yeah, and that's what I would do. Too. Yeah, and you know, and then when that happened, now you were asking the question earlier about how I related it to my other brand. Well, the second talk was all about the power of questions, and I talked about you know taking the power of connection and what kind of really bold questions can we ask of ourselves to change our relationships with each other and also how to change the world. So that's kind of what I did there. And the third TEDx talk was all about, uh, actually it was about connection local versus global. Mm-hmm. And how do we take our connection to be a local and then turn that into a global phenomenon or a movement? And so that's kind of, so they all related to those first three. Uh, and the fourth one was a bit of a shift because of the, uh, the location and the mm-hmm. theme. Uh, that was specifically for uh, university and college students and basically told them, oh, listen, as a leader, how do you fly and how do you make impact when you're actually young? So that was a different, different, mm. uh, different ship. And the fifth one goes back to power connection. It was all about hugs. <laughs> so there you go. There we go, everybody. Now, hey, uh, so a couple of backup plans. You, you do need to be selective just because you get yeah. accepted or get invited may not be something that you want to it's like having a job opportunity or going to college i mean you get accepted at a certain college you may not say yes to that opportunity or you might and you might rank them and you might have a whole group instead of just one that you apply for it's powerful stuff um uh great i appreciate bobby you know you sharing that and uh and that's that's really the first i think that we've been able to tread in that um and uh you know just as a backup this is something maybe you started doing afterward bobby i i actually snuck this in a year ago when i when i gave my talk but uh you know you always kind of want to almost you didn't hear it here from me but you want to have a backup bootleg uh video of your own <laughs> from the yeah. from the gallery just to prove that you were there so uh that's uh that's not a bad idea as well now we're we've been enjoying this talk 
with uh, Bobby Umar, who is my first five-time guest that I've been uh, that I'm aware of at least here on Be the Talk. His uh, the one that we started with was called the Five C's of Connection, and uh, we're going to hear more from Bobby in just a moment in the Blitz Round. Hey, Talk Universe. I hope you've been enjoying today's episode with today's guest. But you know what? Many people want more than that. Many people that listen to Be The Talk actually want to give a talk. And if that's you, you're not alone. Listen to the rest of this podcast. At the end, I'll have a free resource for you just for listening. We're back with the Blitz Round with Bobby Umar. I'm about to ask Bobby a series of either-or questions related to his five TEDx talks. Bobby, are you ready? Yeah, right. Let's do this. All right, let's do it. Were you invited to speak or did you apply? I was invited to speak for the first four. And then the fifth one, I thought I would apply because it aligned with my brand. Okay. How, how did it align with your brand? That's interesting. <laughs> well, the, the theme the theme was connection. So I was like, oh, okay. shoot, you know what? I have a couple of TEDx talk ideas in my back pocket. Let me apply. And then I got I got in right away. Well, I mean, that's remarkable because you got invited for the first one, the, the second one, the third one, the fourth one, and then you decide to apply for the fifth one. That's the, you, you are a, a, a man of mystery. <laughs> Well, that's why there was a break. I mean, I, I went I went with the four time TEDx speaker and I just mm-hmm. kind of focused on my career, and I didn't even think about TEDx talks anymore. But then that theme came down the pipeline. I was like, well, this is perfect. I should really apply, and so I did. So you've been speaking publicly for fifteen years, and you have your normal style and preparation, Bobby. When it comes to a TEDx speak, is that different than how you normally prepare, or not so much for you? Completely different, because you know they said, okay, give us the greatest talk of your life keep it to under 18 minutes, have minimal slides, right? And talk a bit about your personal life. And I'm like, wow, that's a lot. I mean, for me, normally a keynote would be, I'll have 50 to hundred slides. I'm a big, I'm a big PowerPoint guy for structure. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't like to have no slides or little slides. Um, and for me, it was, it was I, that's why I was so terrified. I was so scared. I was so nervous because it was outside my comfort zone. Um, and also, you know, a shorter talk. So completely different preparation. You really have to practice the stories and make sure you get each word, you know, perfectly the way you want it to be. And so that's something that uh, I think is, is way harder. And so, and what's funny, it's shorter talk, but more prep. So like, you know, typically for me, now that I've been speaking for so long, I can probably prepare a talk anywhere between five to 10 hours. But for a TEDx mm-hmm. talk like that, uh, we're talking, for me, you mentioned 50 for me, t- for me as a professional speaker, mm-hmm. 20, 30 hours is goes into my, my TEDx talk prep. Yeah, and and you, uh, I mean, uh, Chris Anderson, the head of TED, uh, he calls this presentation literacy in his book. And this, you know, it's a short form idea centric talk as opposed to a keynote or, you know, yeah. something else where we're, we're kind of the hero is the speaker. So this is a different type of talk. The more you do this different type of talk, the more efficient you get in your own little meta process, uh, that you use. So my next question for Bobby, um, do you prefer to be an opener? Do you prefer to be a closer or in between? That's a good question. Uh, hmm. Well, again, one of the things that I say, like, you know, often when I train people on my TEDx talk trainings is, you know, mm-hmm. when you look at a TEDx talk, are you one of the superstars or are you um, among superstars and they're way better than you? Or are you the one superstar and everyone else is, you know, where, where are you at? And, you know, you got to do a really honest assessment of that. So the thing is, if you're like, the, so in one of the talks, I was definitely one of the, I'm going to call it the superstar of the, of the group. The rest mm-hmm. of them, they're all kind of local people or they're academics. And so for that, uh, you know, I prefer to close, mm-hmm. right? Because then what I'll often do is I'll take even a minute to summarize what we've learned the entire day, and I do a good job of that. But uh, generally speaking, I will say this. I pref- I don't want to go first. I don't want to go last. But I definitely like to go early because mm-hmm. one of the things I learned on my first TEDx talk is I was one of the last to go, and, I'm man, I'm like, I'm so nervous. Let's get this over with. So now I'm like, uh, now I want to get it. I want to get it done. I want to get it done so I can ha- have fun networking, talk to the people. Otherwise, I'm in the back room just practicing, rehearsing, rehearsing, and not talking to anybody. So for me, I prefer early in the day. Enough to know the staging, the lighting is good, and the videos are going well. But I prefer to be in the first half of the day. You know, um, from one closer to another. Um, you know, congratulations, and uh, that's that's not an easy thing to do. So, any any advice for the closers out there? In, well, in addition most, to what you said, to, you know, the, the summary piece is, is great, but what else would you say? 
Well, I think that a closer has to have a really compelling story that really aligns with the theme of the of the conference, and that's a really good way to like set it up. Um, you know, and that, that that's one thing. The second thing is, you know, find a way to end with, end with some inspiration. You know, what's the inspiration and the takeaway that we're all going to get up there? You want them to move. You want them to act on what you say, as opposed to, hmm, that's a good idea. Okay, very nice. No, you want them to really like. No, no, I'm I'm ready today, day one, to move forward and act. And for me, as a closer, that's something I make sure is key. And the last thing I'll say is, a really good close is something you should memorize. So your final thirty seconds or whatever it might be. Get the wording exactly right. Write it all down. Memorize that so that it just, it's like, boom, that's what you really, really want. Well, we've been enjoying this uh, talk with Bobby Umar. His talk is one of the five. is called The Five C's of Connection. You can check out uh, really uh, as many of his. We'll, we'll get all five of them there on the show notes page. And uh, you can also connect with Bobby at uh, rayallen.com. And I'm going to spell that. Uh, for you, R A E A L L A N dot com. R A E A L L A N dot com. He's got a speaker course uh, right in there. You want to learn from great people that have been to the stage like Bobby. And we're going to be right back with Bobby for the final 10 second word of advice in just a moment. Hey, Talk Universe, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And if you want, to give the talk to change the world, but you don't know how or even where to start, no problem at all. Go to be the talk.com forward slash get accepted for my new five day email course that'll show you how. Absolutely free. Just go to be the talk.com forward slash get accepted. And we're back with the final word of advice from Bobby Umar. What is it? I think the biggest word of advice I can give you is that you need to spend time, energy, resources, and some money to invest in your personal brand, to understand your values, your skills, your interests, your traits, your everything. Because if you work on your brand and you understand what it is, you will have, number one, more alignment, which leads to fulfillment. You will have more focus, which leads to a strong purpose. And number three, you will have more impact, which ultimately is your legacy. And if you want to fight for your life and have the life that is worth talking about in stories and having a legacy, invest the time in your personal brand. Bobby Umar, thank you so much for coming on the show today and sharing your wisdom with Talk Universe. My pleasure. Thanks for listening to Be The Talk. For tips and resources to help you change the world, go to be the talk.com. See you tomorrow.